Welcome to the 101st edition of Make Pro Wrestling with Jesse again. I am still your Majestic Champion, Tiger Height. And I'm Peanut Gallery. So, uh, we're talking about a subject that Peanut Gallery only touched on us briefly, but before we get into it, I need to get on my soapbox because there is a lot to talk about, and one of them is actually a topic. Let's Yay! start with Raw. Obviously, the World Heavyweight Champion, but... It was a 1.815 million viewers, but the same as last week, and it was a 0.56 demo instead of a 0.58, and it was ranked number four, but that's because of NBA playoffs. And then there was um, uh, there was a uh, something or another. It was like four million viewers. It was insane. So uh, Cody Rhodes and Finn Balor segment was good. It set up a match with some good wrestlers. Short, sweet, to the point. The Bloodline versus the LWO was a good opener, but the LWO needs to win something because they just look like a bunch of losers every single time they lose. Street Profits and Alexander and Benjamin was fine. No momentum gained, but nothing lost. And let's talk about the belt fairly briefly here because we're going to cover it in depth later. It was needed. And people are worried that this is going to be the consolation prize to the undisputed champion. But the thing is that they've already done this in 2002. Literally the same situation. Undisputed champion goes on SmackDown. They introduce a world heavyweight champion for Raw. This is nothing new. This is nothing different. The belt looks great. The announcement was so needed and people are hyped for it. Uh, the fact that Coldaholic think that everybody hates it is ridiculous. I don't think I saw a bad thing no. as it relates to this. Uh, people comparing it to the AEW World Champion, you are delusional. So, uh, let's just move on from that. I just kind of wanted to rant. <laughs> um, damage Control, Belair, Liv Morgan, and Raquel Rodriguez was a nothing six-woman tag. Uh, it does nothing to promote Belair and Sky, and it totally missed the mark on doing so. The brawl between Theory, Lashley, and Bronson was good. It was lots of action. Nobody looked bad, and Bronson standing tall was good because he's the one who needs the most help within this triple threat. Mm -hmm. uh, Chad Gable and Mustafa Ali was a nothing. It was bland. It was blah. If you, if Mustafa is so bad that he made Chad Gable look weak. <laughs> Cody Rhodes and Finn Balor as a match was a fun Raw match. Cody is really starting to build his momentum back, and because of the World Heavyweight Champion, I think we know who. Who's going to be that champion? I wasn't sure about Rollins versus Omos match when they announced it for Backlash, but given their interaction here, I'm actually hyped for it. They somehow managed to gain my interest slightly into this match. We still have another week. Let's see what they do with it. And finally, Damian Priest and Rey Mysterio. It was a fun main event, and the ending was fine. Bad Bunny challenging got a huge pop, but Bad Bunny always gets it mm -hmm. because it is Bad Bunny, and right now he is the hottest thing in music. Yeah, pretty Just, much. Just like literally in the world. Nobody right. is touching him, Spanish, English, no matter what. Let's go into spring break and actually got a big boost. It was 647K viewers next to 565K. And it was a .18 demo set of .14, and it was ranked number 14 on the top 150. So overall, positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the truck match was fine. It was a way to write off Pretty Deadly from NXT because they are going to be going to the main roster. I think they're probably going to SmackDown, mm -hmm. um, to what I've heard. Uh, Braun Breaker in this heel churn was desperately needed. He feels intense. He looks great. The explosiveness is there. And his crowd reaction is so much better. I feel like he should have been a heel, but you know what? They had the baby face right. run with him. Let's see how he does as a heel. Yep. Cora Jade and uh, Lyra Valkyria was meh. That's all I have to say about it. Carmelo Hayes and Grayson Waller's match did not feel like a big deal, but it should have been a big deal. Mm. It just didn't have that oomph into it. Right. Uh, we finally have Braun Breaker going after Hayes. Thank God, because that was a weird little break between that, ironically speaking. <laughs> so, uh, the churn of uh, Jensen and uh, um, the churn between Brooks Jensen and Kiana James felt rushed, and it was weird. Um, I did like the Briggs and Jensen. They kind of had like a moment, and people lost their minds, but... Is this really it for this rivalry? It just feels like it finally started to gain something right. new, but nope, it just died. Um, Oda Femi, one of the guys from the NIL program, he is super impressive. I like his moveset. He has a great 
He has great presence in the ring, and he's just going to get better. And that's the thing that we got to we gotta strike when the iron is hot with this Oda Femi guy. Right. Um, I don't remember where he was from, but what I saw from him was incredibly impressive. So very, very happy to see that. And finally, Indy Hartwell... Her with this leg injury, is it a legit leg injury? Did I don't, you see I don't, anything? I don't know. I didn't see anything. But she was hurting with her ankle, and then when she was called up, she had a, um, she had a, um, uh, a brace. A brace. So, what is the severity of the injury if there's an right. injury at all? Um, Indy Hartwell being the NXT Women's Champion is not clicking as I thought it was going to be. I don't think either. it's clicking with WWE internally either. So. Yeah, it's it's very strange. You would think that they would actually have that. Right. Oh, AEW. They oh, actually had okay. somewhat of a boost, um, at least as a part of viewers, but not as part of demo. So it was 863K viewers next to 830K, and there was a .28, which was exactly the same as last week, and it was a number nine in the top 150. There you go. Orange Cassidy and Bandito had the best match of the entire show, and it was still kind of meh. This title is still useless. They continue to put it on the line like it's something big, but it's never anything big. Jeff Jarrett beating Dax Harwood was just ridiculous. This had, <laughs> this had to have been punishment for the Dax Harwood podcast. Like, it probably was. <sighs> and Jeff Jarrett, of course, with his political poll in AEW. Right. They're going to beat these people for these titles. Was it was it worth it here, FTR, of signing another four-year deal? Was it really worth right. it? Was the money really worth it for making look like a bunch of fools? Like, seriously. Um, Tony Khan, once again, taking advantage of a dead wrestler, uh, bringing back the Owen Hart Memorial Battle Royal Tournament, whatever it is. Um, I, I just don't care. I don't. And it's like, oh, we're going to have a new announcement every week because when you don't have an announcement, you have 830K people right. watching, and the ratings continue to fall. Yep. The only reason is because of the announcement, and I think statistics prove that every single time. WrestleNomics people, watch them on uh, Twitter or their website. One of the two. I don't like the website, though. Uh, Wardlow's matches are now kind of death. Now they're dragging Luchasaurus and Christian into it. Eh, I'm, I'm going to be optimistic about it because at least it's not Powerhouse Hobbs. They already buried him to hell. This whole Four Pillars tournament was a colossal waste of time. Sammy Guevara winning, and then they're going to be doing a tag team match next. And week. you know that, and you know that the you know that's going to become a fatal four way. What was the point of this? There was well, no point. There was no point of this. If you were going to do a tournament, do an actual tournament. Yep. Instead of oh, the this person has a buy, and then these two wrestle, and then those two will wrestle for this. That is not a tournament. That is not what a tournament is. Right. Have actual stars within it and then have all four of them actually beat – or actually three of them beat big names like Moxley, like Omega, right. like Jericho. That would at least – At least then you can build some credibility around them. Exactly. And as, and as it sits right now, not a single person within this match other than MJF, who is the champion, has – any credibility. The only one who might have a skosh is Darby Allen. Right. Because at least he picks up wins. But Sammy Guevara, barely anything. Jungle Boy just got out of the Christian rivalry and his momentum died immediately because he was off of TV for a while. Right. Um, at the very least, there was good crowd reactions from Darby. And yeah. it's like he's really the only one that I could vehemently see that. Uh, Guevara does not have anything as it relates to it. At least Jungle Boy gets good reaction. Right. People like him. So I would rather have the triple threat, but they want to push Sammy for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's because Sammy. Ty Mello was fucking Tony Khan's toy. Not probably. So Adam Cole's promo sucked. It did not feel authentic. It felt boring. Uh, Jericho Appreciation Society attacking everybody was bad. Orange Cassidy Bandito is helping Adam Cole. Why? When? Huh? Roderick Strong coming in. Does anybody care? No. Nope. Because Kyle O'Reilly's hurt. Bobby Fish is already out of the company. You don't have all the members of Undisputed Era. Right. That's literally when they were their hypest. Yeah. There was no point in time. Ring of Honor, nowhere, that they were bigger than in NXT. Right. Undisputed Era was running wrestling. Pretty and much. And now they're just like doing nothing. Anyway, uh, the, this, the whole dynamite was a colossal mess. Let's talk about Impact because Impact was kind of a weird one. Uh-huh. Didn't you miss? Uh, didn't you miss uh, Cargill Valkyrie? 
Yeah, you you missed a whole oh, yeah. sentence. Ugh. I guess I didn't want to actually look that up. Yeah, uh, Jade Cargill and Taya Valkyrie's TBS Champion match was absolutely embarrassing. <laughs> uh, the it was disjointed. It didn't make any sense. And the fact that Taya went for the move at least three times that she was not allowed to use for some reason, and then this roll up was so poorly done. Taya's done in this company. Like she <laughs> she wrestled her, one match and she's already done. Oh no no no! She didn't. She was wrestling on um, uh, Rampage. Oh. So she was beating nobodies on Rampage. Ah. Instead of actually beating people and looking like a credible threat to Jade, she's losing mm -hmm. and lost. And she just lost clean, middle of the ring, looks like a dork, done. Anyway, let's go to Impact. And then what about Omega? And you, you missed, like, that whole match, too. Oh, yes, that's right, yeah. Remember uh, remember, I, remember how Butcher and Blade were in the main event? You were talking oh, to me about that? yeah, that's right, yeah. Because I thought, because the one that made sense was actually Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen. Yes. Kenny Omega and Kanosuke Takeshka took on Butcher and Blade in the main event. How is that the main bleeping event? To the point where I almost forgot that was the main event of anything. <laughs> that is so embarrassingly bad. There's nothing there. Why was that the main event? I guess because the Four Pillars Tournament Final whatever should have been the main event. Yeah. Because then the world champion can look good. But no, it was like the third match on the fucking card. Yep. Who cares? Like that, that's your world champion number one contender. In, like, the middle of the show. Right. Instead of the main event where they should be. Yeah. Huh. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there. I just punched that thing to death. Maybe I was pissed off that I just punched it. Anyway. Impact Wrestling. Um, I couldn't find ratings, but that's nothing new. Uh, but the match show itself was fine, actually. Uh, Jordan Grace and Masha Slamovic had a fun match. Good action. Good showcase for an awesome division. Impact just has the most solid women's division. Well, right yeah, now. now you have Trinity. Yeah, now you have Trinity in there, and actually, I think that's really going to help them quite a bit. Um, Steve Macklin's segment was fine. PCO is getting some good momentum, and him beating um, uh, Champagne Singh, it was fine. I thought you made a mistake um, about Champagne Singh, but nope, that's his name. I didn't even know that. Um, you know, I just think... You know, PCO just needs to start winning more matches like this, really build that momentum towards under siege. And I have confidence that they will make him look like a credible threat to Macklin. Right. But, you know, Macklin's going to win because they really need him to do so. Uh, Johnny Swinger and this, it was essentially Ziggy Dice and the mask was an absolute nothing. There's nothing to go into it. ABC versus the design was a fine match. Um, I wish the match had a little more focus because Callahan attacked Diener, and that's the rivalry with the design. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not the biggest of fans of the champions being in non-title matches. It just kind of waters them down overall. Uh, Jody Threat and oh, I can't even remember her first name. It was um, Sparks. Was once again a decent showcase. Threat isn't clicking with me personally, but she is getting crowd reaction, so maybe I'm just missing something. Uh, Deanna Perrazzo and Taylor Wilde had a title match. It was a fun main event, but it just seemed kind of random. Yep. Taylor Wilde is one of the half of the tag team champions. She never really showed the interest of her going for the women's champion. I could be wrong, but I'm probably not because I'm Tiger Height. But the match itself was fun. Uh, it was in Toronto. That's yeah. where she's from, so maybe that's why. But, you know, vanity is vanity. Now let's go into our first one, which is the first night of the draft. 2.298 million viewers. This is an official. Uh, next to 2.088. Obviously, everyone's watching the draft. Yes. Uh, a 0.61 demo instead of a 0.49. This show actually surpassed the NFL draft by demo. Yep. This one actually had more demo than the NFL draft. Same night. Oh, there Which I we go. Was crazy. Um, but there you go. Uh, the draft is very interesting so far. There are a lot of good picks, and I think it's really going to shape up nicely. I have confidence in it. They were doing some intermittent throughout. So, like JD McDonough, Zoe Star. Right. Um, and I think there's another NXT wrestler that's going to Raw. I didn't see anything with SmackDown, but SmackDown got a lot of faction stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Raw needs to start. Uh, bolstering their roster a bit more. Uh, the one thing that I did not like 
was the free agent roster that they have going Oh, I don't right like now. that either. That's kind of weird. It's so bizarre. It's like, w then what is the point of the draft if you're going to have this free agent roster right. where they can show up anywhere? They're eventually, they're going to be assigned to a show, so just assign them to a show. Right, just assign them to... It's fine. Like... Pick it up from there. You have the people for it. Right. So it was. I'm excited for it, but there's just some discrepancies mm -hmm. there um, that I'm not a big fan of. Uh, Butch versus LA Knight was a good match. The crowd reaction was awesome for this match, too. I am hyped for it. And LA Knight won, which he desperately needed yep. to win. The Triple Threat Tag Team match was a decent showcase for the tag teams. They were um, focused on the Street Profits because they were drafted to SmackDown right before this match. Uh, the one... Match in one match in one segment, Zelina Vega looks like a credible threat for the SmackDown Women's Champion. Not only did she win the match decisively, but she hit a DDT on Ray Ripley. Ray Ripley looking nervous. People lost their minds too. So they're actually putting Zelina Vega in a good spot right now. Mm -hmm. Don't screw it up yet. Uh, yet. We know that she's not going to win, but make her look credible yep. and a possible threat to the title, and you're always going to dig it, you right. know, and I dig it. Um, good to see the OC back in a new environment. I think this is what they desperately needed. Yep. Um, I don't like that Mia Chin went back to the OC because she hasn't interacted with the OC since AJ's injury. And I don't like that Carl Anderson and Lou Gallows are not on television if AJ Styles is not on television. Right. They are a credible tag team. They were the good brothers. Um, so uh, I wasn't a big fan of the Viking Raiders being squashed, though, overall. The Unspeeded Tag Team Champion match was good. Where it goes, I don't know, but I'm excited. But at the same time, I hope that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens – Go somewhere else and do something else. Because mm -hmm. now it looks like that there will be a conflict within the bloodline yeah. itself. Because when Roman was drafted, it was Roman, Solo, and Paul. Right. But not, not, the, Usos. not the Usos. Right. So that's going to be very interesting. I think the Usos are going to stay on SmackDown. Yeah. But it looks like that they're going to be transitioning into something new. Right. And overall, I'm digging it. Oh, Rampage, Rampage, Rampage. Hooray! Yeah, yeah, well, um, the Bullet Club Gold and then uh, Ricky Starks and Sean Spears, it was a fun opener and at the end of the day was the best match of the show. Um, Bullet Club Gold feels like nothing, though, because Jay White was literally kicked out of Bullet Club by the new leader of Bullet Club, if I am not mistaken, yep. David Finlay, who is the new leader of Bullet Club. So why is Jay White still representing Bullet Club? I don't know. How does that make any sense to anybody with a brain? I have no idea. But I guess it's a new faction. They want Bullet Club somewhere on there. It's yeah. whatever. Yeah. I do like the whole Juice Robinson and Ricky Starks thing. Mm -hmm. Have them brawl more. I want to see more of it. I want to see possible no disqualification because I think that would be actually a good match. Uh, naturally Limitless. Works well as a team. I can run with it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a big fan of it at first. Keith Lee looks fucking awful, but him and Dustin actually do have some chemistry mm -hmm. that I can dig. Is it tag team champion? No. If they get the right crowd reaction, then maybe. Maybe high profile, but they want to continue with Swerve in the embassy, and I'm like, I, who cares? Right. You know? Uh, Anna J and Ashley DeMauro, or whatever her name is. Uh, it was a nothing, and then the brawl between Anna Jay and Julia Hart was a meh, because once again, heel versus heel, Tony can't book that, so it was naturally stupid. Uh, the acclaimed and Daddy Ass's match was an absolute nothing, because somehow Tony Khan screwed up the acclaimed. One of the hottest prospects, one of the hottest tag teams in yep. all of AEW, the biggest crowd reactions, they killed it. Like, nobody cares about the acclaimed at this nope. point. And I think it's because of their popularity. They made the enemies out of the wrong people. This is Zack Ryder circa 2013 all over again, mm -hmm. people. Like, seriously. And I think it's patently obvious. Yep. Uh, Jay Lethal and Cash Wheeler. Uh, it was pretty much the same exact thing as what you saw on Dynamite. So it was a nothing. Jay, Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal won. Because, once again, FTR being punished for being FTR. Right. And because they don't fit the status quo of the AW fans, they're going to get buried for the next four years. You think that the Revival were buried when they were called up to the main roster the first time? Tony Khan is saying, hold my 
Hold my crack. Right. So there you <laughs> Hold go. Hold my crack. <laughs> because he's he's about to screw these kids. So that is my soapbox. Pina Gallery, do you have anything to add as it relates to the show? Nope. What you heard, anything like that? Nope. Okay. So when we come back, we're going into Pina Gallery segment and the primary segment of the show. So we'll be right back. <laughs> 